Hello everybody. This evening starts the days of all. Yom Teruah. The day of trumpets. Um, so I just want to go over this just a little bit to remind us what we should be doing. So Yom Teruah starts this evening and runs through um, tomorrow evening. So sunset September 6th to sunset September 7th. It's also known as the Day of Shout. It starts the first day of all. The ten days of all begins this evening. Um, we hear a chauffeur blown, a shadow of the last trump. The coming day of the resurrection of the dead when the voice of a great messenger will shout like a trumpet. This is the final warning of the coming harvest of the earth by the reapers. It is described at Joel 2, Matthew 24, Yahshua 24, and Psalms 91. Now when we refer to scriptures, we get a description of what we're supposed to be doing on Yom Teruah. And it is found in Levit Leviticus 23, verse 23. And Yahuwah spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first yom of the month, you have a rest, a remembrance of blowing of trumpets, a set-apart mikra. You do no servile work and you shall bring an offering made by fire to Yahuwah. So here we find out we have to blow the trumpets, we have to um, rest, and we do no servile work, which means you're not allowed to work for wages. Um, it's the only appointed time, uh, ordained appointed time, that happens during the new moon. In the Back in the first century and before that, um, the Day of Trumpets was also known as the appointed time that no man knows the day or hour. It was a Hebrew idiom uh, that would, people were very familiar with um, when they would say the, the day is uh, the festival or the appointed time is coming that no man knows the day or the hour they all knew that they were speaking of the day of trumpets and um, I have a video on that if you want to go and watch it and it explains that in great detail uh, so we, we that's it for trumpets as far as scripture goes of course the uh, um, offering made by fire to Yahuwah, we can no longer do um, because we, uh, we're not required to do any because that's part of the old priesthood and um, I don't believe that we're required to do any burnt offerings or animal sacrifices or anything like that uh, anymore because of uh, the permanent sacrifice that Yahusha did for us. Now, trumpets is mentioned again in Numbers 29. Um, right off the get go, it says, And in the seventh moon, on the first yom of the moon, you have a Kadesh Mikra. You do no servile work. It is a yom of blowing the trumpets for you. And that's pretty much it other than it goes into um, the burn offerings, the drink offerings, the grain offerings, and, and how you're supposed to uh, make those. And like I said, we're not required to do those uh, any longer as far as I know. And um, the, uh, it, it does mention that it is uh, of the on a full uh, on, on the new moon on uh, verse six besides the burn offering with its grain offering for the new moon 
the continual burnt offering with its grain offering and their drink offerings according to the right ruling as a sweet fragrance and offering made by fire to Yahuwah. And um, that's it, really. So that's all we know about trumpets, folks, as far as scripture goes. Um, so definitely it uh, is a day uh, of rest and we do no survival work and we blow the shofar. Alright, now in the, the, uh, the uh, Numbers 29, um, it doesn't give as much detail as in Leviticus 23 about the festivals or the appointed times, but it does um, go into a lot more detail about the sacrifices, the grain offerings, drink offerings, the burn offerings, grain offerings, stuff like that. So it kind of it gives a, a better description of that, which we're no longer required to do because of the permanent sacrifice Yahusha has already done. The first four appointed times are fulfilled by Yahusha already. And then again in um, you know, Deuteronomy 16, uh, we get some information, but what, it, what the information in Deuteronomy 16 really is, is about the festivals, the uh, pilgrimage festivals that uh, all men 20 and over uh, are required to migrate into Jerusalem to celebrate together. It gets a gathering and it's a festival to us. And um, so those three are Pesach, which engulfs Passover and the seven days of unleavened bread and first fruits. Um, and then the next pilgrimage festival would be Shabuoth, and which uh, you're also supposed to go to Jerusalem to celebrate that. And then the third one is the festival of tabernacles or booths. And that's another uh, gathering in, in Jerusalem. In a festival. So there's really, you know, it's it's easy to say the seven festivals or the seven feasts, you know, uh, because you are supposed to be joyful and celebrate on them. Um, you're not supposed to eat on the Day of Atonement or drink, but you're, but you're supposed to be joyful and still be joyful on that day, which almost sounds like a contradiction, but it's really not. Um, but, uh, it's easy to say that, but really, I guess if you want to uh, be political, politically correct, um, there's seven appointed times. There's three festivals, all right, and um, so we got a kind of, uh, and they're all, and they're, and they're all high Sabbaths, Shabbats, except for Passover, the preparation day. Uh, to leading up to the first day of unleavened bread. That's not a high Shabbat. Uh, so there you go. Um, that's pretty much all we know about Scripture. So those three festivals, if you will, are found in uh, Deuteronomy 16. Numbers 28 and 29 describe the uh, sacrifices more clearly and we get the most information out of Levit Leviticus 23. So to this evening we start trumpets and we'll be sounding off the shafars. If you don't have one uh, you can go on the internet and Google shafar blowing and you can um, hear people blowing the shafar. There's a bunch of beautiful sounds. The shafar is an amazing instrument. And um, at least I would go, I, you know, I go on the internet and, and I turn it up and let it, let it rip, you know. So um, that's pretty much that. And so what I'd like to do really quick here is, uh, if you didn't watch the, uh, our rescheduled program or broadcast on our stream, it was, uh, we did that on um, the Shabbat evening at closing of the Shabbat to make up for uh, the uh, 
difficulty that I had on the original scheduled time, uh, which would have been the beginning of the Shabbat at 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And we will convert back to that time frame um, of uh, this, the beginning of Shabbat uh, and on uh, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So we're going to go back to that. We're not going to keep doing it on the on the Shabbat closing of the Shabbat. We're going to do it, go back to the beginning of doing it on the beginning of the Shabbat like we were doing before. Okay. So uh, anyway, if you haven't seen that, watch it. Uh, we give a lot of information about the, the seven appointed times and the three uh, festivals and we also uh, at the end uh, some brothers come in and we and we discuss things uh, uh, pretty interesting conversations toward the end uh, of the of the broadcast so anyways if you haven't watched it take time to watch it Important, very important information on there. Okay, so now, uh, real quickly, I would like to just look at some additional uh, scriptural information that is worth mentioning and uh, concerning the appointed times. And uh, some information is wor actually worth repeating. So uh, without any further ado, let's touch on that and then we'll keep this thing short. Okay, so, uh, and now, out from Exodus 19.5, we'll read it. And now, if you diligently obey my voice and shall guard my covenant, then you shall be my treasured possession above all the peoples, for all the earth is mine. So, he's given us a promise um, of being his treasured possession if we diligently obey his voice and guard his covenant. Um, another one, uh, number two, we'll say, three festivals are pilgrimage festivals, referring to the three commanded festivals in which all males 20 years of age and up are to make pilgrimage to Jerusalem to give re reference to Yahuwah. These three commanded pilgrimages are Passover, or Pesach, engulfing seven days of unleavened bread and first fruits, Shabuoth, and seven days of tabernacles, plus one, the eighth day, which is a high Shabbat. The first day of tabernacles and the eighth day of Tabernacles is High Shabbat. Um, three, on six of the seven appointed times, we are to eat a feast to Yahuwah. The exception is Yom Kippur. On the Day of Atonement, this day is a fast to Yahuwah. We do not eat and we do not drink. Even if it falls on a weekly Shabbat, we are commanded to afflict your being. So normally we would eat and be thankful and grateful to Yahuwah on Yom Shabbat, on the weekly Shabbat. But if the uh, Day of Atonement would happen to fall on Yom, Shab uh, Yom Shabbat, then we would, we would, it would override because it's a high Shabbat and we would not eat on that particular, particular weekly Shabbat. All right. Number four, the appointed times are also rest days in our festival high Shabbats. Three of them are festival high Shabbats. They are similar but subtly differing from the weekly Sabbath. If a high Shabbat falls on a weekly Shabbat, the high Shabbat rules supreme over the weekly. Um, matzah, number five, matzah, or the seven days of unleavened bread and sukkuth or tabernacles, are week-long festivals. Each have two rest days, the first day and the last day for matzah, the first day and the eighth day for 
booths, respectively. Number six, Yahuwah's appointed times are shadows of things to come for the body of Mashiach. They are the outline of his redemption plan. Read Matthew 22. Number seven, this appointed times are one indivisible plan for all people. There's only one head, one husband, one bride, one body. After all has been put under Yahushua's feet, the head and the body will be made subject to Yahuwah in order that Yahuwah be all in all. You can reference that in 1 Corinthians 20 through 28. Number eight, Yom Teruah, or Day of Trumpets, or the Day of Shout, is the only feast that occurs, actually it's the only appointed time, we should say, that occurs during or around the day of the new moon. It's on the new moon. The new moon is when the moon doesn't shine. It is when the moon is just a dark disk hanging in the sky. It is the darkest night of the month. Although the word trumpets is applied to this name, we do not blow a trumpet. We blow a shofar made of ram's horn. Number nine. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of a festival or of the new moon or of the Shabbat days which are a shadow of things to come for the body of Mashiach. Go ahead and compare Colossians 2 verses 16 and 17 to Isaiah or Yashiyahu 8 20. Number 10. Yah is love and love is the purpose of life. In 1 John 1 6 we read, and this is love that we walk according to his commands. So we have to keep these appointed times, folks. They're not thrown out into the trash bin of iniquity and abolished, all right? They are something we have to do. We're commanded to do these annually. 11, 1 John 2, verses 3 through 6. The one who says, I know him, and does not guard his commands is a liar and the truth is not in him. Number 12. The seven appointed times, or modim, are found in Levit Leviticus 23 and Numbers 28-29 and Deuteronomy 16. We are commanded to proclaim them at their appointed times as Kadesh Mikra, meaning set apart proclamations and or called out rehearsals. Don't forget the three pilgrimage festivals are found in Deuteronomy 16. Number 13. Yahushua was cut off from the living, fulfilling Passover. The three days and three nights he was in the tomb validated his teaching authority, which he gave as the sign of Jonah. On the first day of the next week during the seven-day period of matzah, his body became the real wave sheaf offering, the Bikurim, the firstborn from the dead. His resurrection was the reality, and the wave sheaf, or Bikurim, was the shadow. Bikurim is the Hebrew word for first fruits, and the same word for firstborn. A child is metaphorically fruit. The Shabbuath, or Pentecost in Greek, is commemorating the giving of Torah at Sinai. The ten words are a marriage covenant called the covenant of love. We are to obey our husband, Yahusha, and stay faithful and true to him, being cleansed by his precious blood and water. We are now his wise virgin brides, having filled our lamps with oil, meaning we have the Ruach HaKadosh in us, 
and Yahusha has filled our hearts with his Torah. Read Isaiah 54, verses 5 through 7. Yahusha said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He fills us with the manna from heaven, or bread of life, and living waters, or the Torah, or the Ruach HaKadosh. On Shabbat, his life joined to the minds of his followers in such a way that they received the power to guard and teach his Torah. He writes a love for Torah on our hearts of those who receive him. We are witnesses that he is Yahuwah. Read Isaiah 43:12. 14. Pesach is often used as a general term for Passover, uh, but actually Pesach engulfs the first three festivals of the year. These three are Passover, seven days of unleavened bread, and first fruits. Number 15. Yahusha is our Passover, one offering for all. Our lamb was slain on the 14th day of the first month, of Bib, about the ninth hour, on an executioner's stake, or a wooden beam, a pole, a timber, and or a tree. See, read 1 Peter 2.24. Special note is crooks or cross is a pagan symbol of sun worship around the world. The Greeks associate the crooks with Jesus, Jesus. Number 16, Passover is not a high Sabbath day. The high Sabbath days are, number one, the first day of matzah, last day of matzah, Shabbat, Yom Teruah, Yom Kippur, first day of Sukkoth, the morrow after the last day of Sukkoth, which is the eighth day, also known as the last great day. Number 17. Shabuot, the giving of the Torah at Sinai, relates in comparison to Acts 2. Yahuwah's presence came upon the mountain in fire. And Yahushua's spirit came into the Nazarene, sealing them with his name and immersing them with fire. Sinai was his dwelling place, and we became his dwelling place as he promised us. The first covenant was inscribed in stone by the finger of Yahuwah as the everlasting covenant, placed inside an ark and in, in placed in the inner chamber of his temple. The 120 followers in the upper chamber received the power of Yahushua's spirit. He inscribed his Torah in their hearts and minds as the renewed covenant. He placed them inside the ark, which is now our being, in the inner chamber of our heart, in his temple, or it became our bodies. Read Jeremiah 31. Stay humble and walk with humility, for our Yahuwah is a consuming fire. Read Hebrews 12, 29. 18. Passover meal consists of lamb, matzah, and bitter herbs. It shall be eaten in haste, with shoes on and fully dressed, with walking sticks present. The Hebrew was on high alert and ready to march out of bondage at a moment's notice. For your information, if, if you are not in Jerusalem, only the shank of the lamb should be eaten. The shank of the lamb should be eaten. Number 19. Yahuwah has set his word and his name above all. Read Psalms 138.2. If his word, the Torah, and his name, Yahuwah, is placed above all, then how can either one of them be irrelevant? Number 20. The elect are those guarding the commands of Yahuwah and possessing the witness of Yahushua HaMashiach. 
read Revelation 12 and Revelation 14. They are called the Nazarim, meaning branches, or watchmen, or guards, uh, guarding the name and the word. <clears throat> Guardians. Depending on the context that the word Nazarim is being used in. The assembly of the Nazarim is plainly defined in Revelations 3, verses 7 through 13. Num uh, number 21. There is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The seven festivals, or seven appointed times and three festivals, if you will, are for all people, all believers. There's only one Yahuwah, one Torah, one Mashiach, one body, one bride, one blood covenant, one commission, one Yisrael, one kingdom, one lawgiver, one judge who can uh, save or destroy. Yahuwah does not lie or change. His words stand forever, are eternal and living. Yahusha is Yahuwah manifested. He is the leaf and the tall, and he is from everlasting to everlasting which means there is only one name that you can be delivered by, and that name is Yahusha. Number 22. There is a higher calling. The called out ones will be in the first resurrection and, the rule with, and will rule with Yahuwah forever. They are his bride and or Asha. They will be redeemed on or about Yom Kippur sometime in the near future. Number 23. These mentioned seven appointed times are not the total of all Yahuwah's appointed times, but are the ones outlining his redemption plan. For an example, the weekly Shabbat is also an ordained appointed time. It was first commanded at creation and was ordained as the sign of the everlasting covenant forever. The word uh, Shabbat appears nine times and the disciples or Talmud were recorded as keeping the Shabbat day 85 times in the book of Acts alone. I think that's backwards. So the word Shabbat appears 85 times and the disciples were recorded as keeping Yom Shabbat nine times in the book of Acts alone. So there remains a Shabbat keeping for the people of Yahuwah. Reference Hebrews 4, 9. The weekly Shabbat is a sign that we are his people and that we belong to him. Keeping it is evidence of who we serve. We are to feast and be joyful while entering his rest. The weekly Shabbat will be kept in his future eternal kingdom. It is forever. Reference Exodus 31 verses 13 through 17, Yashiyahu 56 verse 3, Yashiyahu 66 22, Ezekiel 20 12. It is possible and may be that after the old earth and heaven pass away by fire, that Yahuwah will recreate the new earth and the new heaven in a seven-day pattern again, resting on the last day again, which may be why the Yom Shabbat will last forever. And this is in reference to um, Revelations when it speaks of the seven thunders that were sealed and no one and we didn't know what they are this may be the the seven days of the, the renewed creation resting on the seventh day again and causing Yom Shabbat to last forever um, pretty interesting there the seven thunders found in Revelations and if this is true We'll be like the Malachim that watched with joy and shouting and singing as he created things uh, the first in the first creation, right? 
24. Always go back and read all extracted or cherry-picked verses in their respected chapters in context. This is how we find truth. So if someone um, gives you an extracted verse, cherry-picked, you know, take that verse, find it in, in the chapter they extracted it from, and read that entire chapter in context to see what that verse is actually speaking about. This is how we find truth, folks. Number 25, stay in belief. Keep the expectation. Love one another. The greatest of these is love. Number 26, Yahushua said we would not see him again until we say, blessed is he who is coming in the name of Yahuwah. Barak Habab Bashim Yahuwah. Reference John 12, 13 and Psalms 1, 18, 26. Number 27. Come out of her, my people. Paraphrasing, this means, Hello, wake up now and part ways with the walking dead. It's about to get very serious, folks. Reference Yashiyahu 29, verse 13 and 14 and Matthew 15, 8. 28. Repentance is a change of mind. This change of mind allows us to fall in love with the Torah and promise to obey Yahusha as we would a bride, her husband. We accept his love and give him our love. Love is all that will remain, and love is all there is. Number 29. The moon phases are a concept that mostly refers to the temporal period it takes the moon to renew. Starting with the new moon, this being the first day of the moon phase, it appears hanging in the sky as a dark disk with zero light building on it, and it's at its darkest. Day by day, light subtly builds upon the face of the moon until 15 days later, when the light completely fills the disk. It is now fully illuminated and at its brightest. This is called the full moon. Then the cycle reverses until the moon renews. Traditionally, the moon cycle identifies with our spiritual life, suggesting our struggle with the flesh is a constant cycle. But even though we continually fall away from the light, even to the point of complete darkness, Yahuwah never leaves us or forsakes us. He only builds us back up. He subtly brings us back out of that complete darkness and back into His marvelous light. Synonymously, the new moon represents our darkest, most disobedient time being farthest away from Yahuwah. And the full moon represents our illuminated, most obedient time when we're the closest to Yahuwah. Waxing suggests that we are advancing toward the light, and waning suggests we are falling away into darkness. So it is said in Yehudim tradition that the human life cycle mimics the moon cycling. Number 30. Our liberty is from sin and death and men's traditions, not the law or commands of Yahuwah. By the unmerited kindness of Yahuwah, we are being delivered through his gift of belief. By receiving his gift of belief, we are compelled to obey him out of fear and or out of love for him and his covenant. Make no mistake, it is not our obedience that saves us, but it is evidence of our belief and evidence that we are being delivered. It is impossible to repent while staying lawless. Number 31. Torah is the Hebrew word which specifically refers to the covenant also known as the Ten Words, or Debarim, and the Ten Commandments. Torah is also used to generally refer to the five books 
or scrolls of Moshe. The Torah's effect on the world is exhibiting a love for Yahuwah and others. Rejecting the Torah results in hate, fear, ruin, violence, and leads to death. If we refuse to receive a love for the truth or the Torah, then he sends us a strong delusion to believe the lie or the fraudster. That obedience, uh, the lie is that obedience is unnecessary. This is the secret of lawlessness, also called the mystery of iniquity. Read 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 very carefully. If we simply believe that Yahushua died for our sins so that we can continue to disobey and keep on sinning willfully, we are in error, major error. Because this teaching is the very thing that the author of Hebrews directly refutes in Hebrews 10 verses 16 through 28. It is not too hard or impossible to obey Torah. We are empowered to obey the covenant by the supernatural power of who is indwelling us, the Ruach HaKadosh. Yahusha said, My yoke is easy and the burden is light. But he warns us that it comes with a worldly cost attached to it, persecution for righteousness' sake. The message of the kingdom is repent for the reign of Yahuwah draws near. Although this message was repeated over and over by him, it still remains a huge mystery and veiled to those Yahuwah does not call. Yahusha did not come to destroy the Torah or commandments. He came to destroy the works of the devil. Salah. Love and shalom to everyone. And remember that Yom Tarua starts this evening, folks. From evening to evening. Thanks for watching. And uh, remember to stay in love with Yahushua HaMashiach. So long, beloved of Yahuwah. So long, everyone. See you next, uh, this week, coming up on Shabbat Talk, 8 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Back to the original timeline now. So long.